oh, you're a rookie. You, you got to go another year. But Bob did a great job for a, a rookie. Uh, you know, Lee and I have played uh, the Chili Bowl game a number of times. Bob uh, was really chasing us hard. So uh, he already started the year off great. And I didn't say Keith Koontz uh, Motorsports like I thought I might uh, still say. But uh, Christopher, big things? Yeah, the, well, first off, the Chili Bowl was a really special deal for me. But I'm really looking forward to getting to Daytona and starting 27 off right. And uh, I can't wait. I wish we could go tomorrow. First question for Christopher. Adam. We're getting a microphone to you, Adam. They're trying to find a parking space. <laughs> Hi, Christopher. Adam Fenwick from Speed Sport. Obviously, just coming off the Chili Bowl, I'm curious, um, outside of your NASCAR schedule, when are we going to see you in a midget or a sprint car again this year? Well, I, I don't really have a good answer for that. I know I'm going to try and do uh, a couple sprint car and midget races throughout the year, but I don't really have anything scheduled yet. Uh, I'm going to be going to Volusia in, in a couple weeks, the week before Daytona, and uh, going to be watching. And Tony had mentioned that if he doesn't feel good, I might get to drive his sprint car. So uh, that's up in the air. But as of right now, I'm just going to go watch and hang out and uh, get ready for Daytona. Next question. Tyler Burnett, Motor Racing Network, suit looks snazzy. Um, being that you are the veteran at Kyle Busch Motorsports this year, which sounds kind of weird. Yeah, that's changed uh, a little bit. Yeah. Do you feel a little bit of pressure having to help Noah and knowing that you have to get back to the Final Four at Homestead? Uh, no pressure. No. I mean, I've always been... I've always put a lot of pressure on myself, and I don't feel any added pressure being being the veteran or anything. So uh, it'll be cool to see how Noah, obviously Noah is really talented. We saw at Phoenix and Homestead as two truck races that he did last year. He was able to, I think he was in the top five in practice at Phoenix. So he had a lot of speed there. And uh, so he'll be, he'll be good. He'll be tough to beat. And uh, we just got to do our job and uh, win more races this year. That's our whole goal going into 2017 is to be able to win more races and yet still put ourselves in Homestead with a chance to win the championship. Next question. Jessica Ruffin with NASCAR.com. You had such a great rookie season, um, making it to the Final Four in your rookie year. Um, you talked about wanting to win more races this year. How much higher are your expectations this year, having made it so far in your rookie season? Well, I, I guess my expectations are similar this year to what they were last year. And uh, last year did not live up to my expectations. Obviously, getting to Homestead was a very, uh, very good way to salvage a, I'd call a a B year because uh, we just didn't win the races that I was planning on winning. Um, I know Toyota was expecting a little bit more out of me. So uh, our whole goal going into this year is I, I've got to win races. I need to win more shows. So if we can win races and still put ourselves in contention to win the championship, then uh, I'll be extremely happy with this year. Knight. Christopher. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Congratulations on the Chili Bowl victory. Um, you have a new crew chief with Rudy Fugel, no slouch to success at Kyle Busch Motorsports. How excited are you to work with him this season? I'm really excited to work with Rudy. Obviously, his success has been proven time and time again with multiple drivers. So I'm excited to get to Daytona, Atlanta, and see how it is working with him. I feel like... Uh, I feel like everything is there to produce good finishes and, and win races, so I'm excited to uh, work with Rudy. I've been around Rudy a lot. Uh, I've been at Kyle Busch Motorsports now for four years, I think. So I've uh, been around him in the shop a lot, talked with him, but obviously a relationship is totally different whenever um, it turns from friends to driver crew chief. But uh, we've been working really hard to uh, create a really good driver crew chief relationship there, and we're going to spend time on the simulator preparing for Atlanta and Daytona. So uh, I feel like we'll be as ready as we can be, and uh, I can't wait. Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com. Can you take me through how, when the process of Toyota recruiting you and signing you into their developmental program? Well, I've been really fortunate throughout my young career to be connected with the car owners that I that I have been connected with. And so uh, I started out as a, a, a dirt guy, and I, I grew up running midgets in Oklahoma and then took a break from midgets and went and ran wing sprint cars. And uh, I was actually running wing sprint cars whenever I got connected with Keith Coons Motorsports. Uh, Pete Willoughby, who is a co-owner at Keith Coons Motorsports, contacted me and asked me to drive for them 
Uh, and then whenever I got to drive for Keith Coons Motorsports, that's how I got connected with Toyota. And uh, through that bond with Toyota obviously led me to Kyle Busch Motorsports. So uh, it's something that I'm really proud to be a Toyota racing development driver and uh, hope I can bring them success. Well. Uh, Wolfgang Monzer from Germany, Rangeport Press Agency. <coughs> Sorry. Congratulations for the Chili Bowl. Well, unfortunately, uh, this kind of race doesn't exist in Europe. Coming from NASCAR, is this an advantage working setup wise or springs? I don't know if you can work on midget or sprint cars with springs and setup and all these things. Or do you think is it difficult to adopt to this kind of race cars when you're coming from NASCAR racing? So the NASCAR scene and the dirt track scene is. Um, almost polar opposites. So it's very tough to bounce back and forth, but for me growing up on dirt, uh, the NASCAR scene is almost the foreign scene to me. Um, but over the last couple of years, obviously I've been able to get more accustomed to it and get uh, more comfortable doing it. So for me, the dirt is still where, I'm my, where my comfort zone is, but it's obviously growing at a rapid pace to where I am very comfortable in the truck garage. Uh, but as far as setup stuff, um, I'm not really too involved with it, but it, it, nothing really relates from NASCAR to the, the dirt stuff. Stan and then Lewis. <clears throat> Hi, Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. Since you're a youngster um, versus all the oldsters out there, how, how much of working off the track, learning in front of those simulators, how much does that really affect you when you get in a race car? Well, it's really cool. Toyota works extremely hard. Uh, they've obviously really amped up their driver development program. So uh, with them having these younger drivers, they've put in a lot of effort into making sure that their simulator is uh, as useful and, and can pr compare or prepare you as well as it can. So uh, I've been doing or working really hard the last couple years now to make sure that I'm prepared whenever I show up to the racetrack. And uh, uh, it, it works extremely well. And but nothing can replace seat time. So I'm really thankful that this is my second full-time year now. So uh, going to the racetracks for the third and fourth and sometimes fifth time is going to be uh, really big for me. So uh, nothing replaces actual seat time and driving and laps. But uh, the simulators have been extremely helpful for me being able to just be as prepared as I can get going into the races. Lewis. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lewis Frank Reuters. Yesterday, um, Kyle said, as teammates, uh, he, he was helping Daniel Suarez, so he says, call me any time. And unfortunately, Daniel did. Now, Kyle's your boss, uh, ultimate boss. Uh, have you worked out a telephone schedule with him? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Kyle is, uh, he's the best boss you could have. Obviously, he's one of the most talented NASCAR guys uh, we've ever seen. So to be able to have him as a boss is really cool because he's, He's so involved with his truck program and his late model program too. But every competition meeting on Monday, Monday morning, he's always there. He's always uh, questioning everybody. Why'd you do this? Why didn't you do this? How'd you feel when you did that? And he's, uh, I feel like that's why Kyle Busch Motorsports is as successful as what it is, is because he's so involved with it. And uh, any of his drivers, they're able to get a hold of him and ask for advice on uh, pretty much anything that you could think of, and he'll be there to answer for you. So it's cool to have a boss as involved as what he is, and I'm really thankful to be a part of it. Kelly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kelly Crandall, racer.com. Christopher, a large portion of the truck series field kind of graduated to the Xfinity series or is doing other things. Have you had a chance to kind of look at what the competition will be this year and, and where everything stacks up? Yeah, I feel like uh, last year the truck series was extremely competitive and uh, out of the eight drivers to make it to the chase, two guys made it on points. And of those two guys that made it on points, they pretty much had flawless years minus a win. So uh, I feel like it was one of the harder chases to make. And then obviously going into Homestead, um, I was on the outside looking in until William had his unfortunate issue. So uh, it was extremely difficult to um, make the final four just to going to show how uh, how competitive the truck series was last year. And I feel like it'll be uh, the same this year. My good buddy Chase Briscoe just got moved to, to Brad Keselowski Racing. And obviously, he's no slouch behind the wheel winning the ARCA championship last year. So uh, there's a lot of good young talent coming in. And uh, I hope to beat them. Well, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, we see you've got the uh, golden driller. 
uh, would never be a bad thing to take a picture as you're exiting. Uh, we've got Matt Tiff about to come up, but thank you for, uh, for joining us. And uh, let's grab a, a quick photo with him as he exits with that, with a uh, media tour background, so we can uh, capture that image. We've got some photos going on. We know what that sounds like, so we'll get him set. Thanks, Christopher. Awesome. First question for Matt. First off, how how you feeling? I, I'll go ahead and throw that out. How's things? No, oh, I'm I'm doing great. It's uh, it's awesome to be able to look forward to 2017 in full health and um, honestly not have to worry about that. Just get rolling, get racing. Uh, that's 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 the best thing out of all of this. That's that's the best, absolutely. One in the uh, back corner. I got a couple of side by side. Wolf threw a nice block there for. Uh, Joe Manzer, uh, FoxSports.com. Uh, Matt, uh, when did, did, was there ever a time where you really questioned whether you'd be able to get back to this point, and uh, how much does it make you appreciate that you were able to do it? When you go through something like I did with, with a brain operation or, or really any serious medical condition, um, you know, th there's times where you wonder, at what point things get back to normal. I, I always had in the back of my mind that I was going to get back into racing, I was gonna get back into NASCAR, so I used that as my motivation to get back. Um, now the timing of when I got back, I had no idea. I didn't know if it was gonna be a few weeks, I didn't know if it was gonna be months, you know, this next year, I had no idea. Uh, the only thing I knew is that the best I could do was to use every resource I had possible to re-strengthen my brain in any way I could and just try to try to get myself in a position where I could get back into a race car. So being able to look now into 2017 um, and not having to worry about that, have it completely uh, in the past and not be paranoid about that just, you know, makes everything that much you know, it makes it that much more sweet to get to this point and, and, and look forward uh, to a great year. Next question. Kelly Morrison, NASCAR Preview and Press Guide. Uh, in studying in UNC Charlotte, how do you think your degree in business management will further your career? Yeah, you know, I, uh, at this point, because of the timing of everything that happened last year to this point, uh, I've actually taken some time off of school. But definitely the first couple years I did there uh, was absolutely huge for being able to talk to people in boardrooms and um, strategizing with sponsors. And I, I feel like that's one of my strong suits that I've been able to capitalize on, and I will continue to do that. But, um, you know, they are a it's, a, it's a great university, and uh, I know lots of people in the NASCAR community have, have gone through UNC Charlotte, so um, it's, it was definitely a large help, and I look forward to, you know, hopefully getting back there sometime uh, when I can figure out the schedule to, to do that. Next. Greg. Hey, Matt. Uh, Greg Engel, um, cupscene.com, but I'm also a practicing neuropsychologist, so I'm kind of curious from that side. Um, have you done any cognitive exercises, and, and how was your last, uh, how was your last checkup? Yeah, so uh, they told me to get lots of lots of uh, neurocognitive apps. So the little puzzle games and stuff. I was like, at first, I was like, oh come on, this is stupid. And then I got it. I was like, God, this is hard. <laughs> um, but it was interesting though, because especially in the beginning stages in in July and kind of the first part of August, uh, you know, there's still a bit, little bit of cloudiness and doing those games over and over and over again. Uh, you know, I see like the Lumosity commercials, and you're like, does, does that really work? Uh, and then months down the road, it's like, wow, that actually, I think, really helped clear up my head. So uh, I did that. I did a neurocognitive exam. And I'm really interested to go back in July this year, a year after, to compare my results. I think that'll be pretty fascinating. But I uh, actually have an MRI and a checkup coming up. But my last ones have been great. And they're just routine checkups. So um, you know, that's, that's good to just keep it rolling and, and make sure I get checked on. But it's just, it's just protocol for that. Jacob. Jacob Seelman, Performance Motorsports Network. A uh, little bit of a different dynamic all of a sudden at JGR this year for you, Matt. Uh, the last couple years, there's been, you know, especially last year with Daniel and Eric both running full time, but this year with two rotator cars, basically, you're the guy. Does that change your mindset? Does that alter any preparation planning that you've got on your shoulders for this year? Well, first off, I just want to say I'm, I'm so proud to, to be that uh, only full-time car at Joe Gibbs Racing. Um, you know, it's, 
it's such a unique opportunity that I didn't, obviously I didn't think I would have that. Uh, I don't know if, if any of us saw the news from Carl coming. So, um, you know, Joe Gibbs Racing and, and TRD and Toyota, they gave me so many resources and uh, so many tools to use as a driver to better myself. And this, I've never had a full-time season before, so that that ability to go out and race every weekend and be consistent uh, and, and, you know, just getting getting that seat time every week is gonna be absolutely huge for me in my career going forward. Bob. <coughs> Bob Pock for CSPN. How often do you have to have uh, checkups? Currently every eight weeks, uh, and then after this one coming up in the next week or so, uh, hopefully it'll be extended back to maybe 10, 12 weeks, I'm not really sure, but over time it gets slower and slower. Stan. Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. Have other members of this world reached out to you to, to show their people suffering the same issue, that recovery is, is possible? Yeah, um, that's one of the things I'm, I'm probably most proud of now is working with the American Brain Tumor Associations and other organizations for, um, you know, raising awareness and, and showing people that there's a voice. Uh, I, I've talked about this in the past, but we don't really know too much about brain tumors as a society. Um, you know, you hear, you hear other diseases and you think, okay, you can get cured from that, whatever. You, you go to this resource, you go to this doctor, you know what to do. Um, brain tumors are a little bit different. There's a stigma that it's a, de a death sentence. There's a stigma that it's a very bad thing, that your life is over. So I want to be an advocate of brain tumor awareness, and I want to be able to help those others in need. Um, you know, I know I had a young fan of Kentucky, and he was... Uh, you know, just 10 years old, and he was going through an operation in, in a few weeks. So being able to talk to those people and, and having them have an outlet to come to me uh, and, and talk with, I love that, and I want to be able to help people more with that. So um, the more I can raise awareness for it, the more I think we can uh, help find cures for it and uh, hopefully make it to where it's not, you know, it doesn't have such a bad stigma with it. Barry. Uh, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcasting, WAKG. Junior talked earlier about the desire to come back versus getting cleared to come back. Talk about that desire to get back into regular competition, given that your perspective is very early in your career and Junior, you know, much further in his career at this point. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because starting 2016, I thought we were really riding a, a high of, of great momentum and, and things were really looking, uh, you know, to st start falling into place uh, with my season there. So having been pulled out of the car, you know, my first questions were, you know, can't we just wait until November? Like, go do the surgery then, just wait. And, um, you know, you think about it for a few hours and you go, no, that's that's not possible. Yeah, I got to take care of myself first and, and uh, you know, this this part will, will take care of itself however this falls out. But, um, yeah, the, uh, the hardest part of the recovery process was just the anxiousness of when am I going to get back in the car? Um, you want every day to go out and be it, it to be normal. And, uh, you know, the hardest part for me, the first couple of weeks was just, you know, watching races on TV because, you know, I still wanted to stay active and know what was going on in the, in the racing community. But at that same time, you're like, I should be out there. I, I don't in, internally, I don't feel different, but I can't do those things right now. Luckily I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm back to being hundred percent fine. But, um, during that time period, it's like, man, I just, I want to get out there. I want to be involved uh, in racing. And it's just, it was hard to take a back seat to that. Got about one more question's worth of time. Well, we did this a couple of times yesterday. We got about 45 seconds. So you get a little bit of time off between here and the next station. That's never a bad thing with as many places as we make you all go today. Matt Tiff, thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Bubba is on his way. Somebody say uh, more happy about your own basketball tournament, about UT, you know? Oh, yeah. big win. Yeah. Big win last night. And I lost my game against Denny in his league. So, But Denny wasn't in the finals, and I was on his team, and I got traded from his team. So it's kind of funny, yeah. Kelly Crandall. Kelly Crandall. Hey, good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Um, Kelly Crandall, racer.com. You've got a nice fire suit there. Lots of logos on it, but what is your sponsor outlook for this year? Because um, last year you had a lot of Ford on the car and things like that. So what does it look like going into this year? 
Yeah, uh, Lidos, uh, thankful for them. Uh, military defense company uh, have stepped up and have been a great partner of Roush Fenway and the number six team uh, the last half of this of last season. And they're stepping up again uh, for a handful of races. Uh, we're in kind of a little tight spot here. We're still trying to figure out the rest of the game plan. But our, our goal is to, to be at Homestead for the season finale, win the Xfinity Series championship. Um, we just got to uh, climb over some obstacles, uh, do a couple hurdles to, uh, to, to get to that point. But uh, we will be at Daytona. Um, we still got the same mindset as going in to win every race, do the best that we can each and every weekend, and put ourselves in the right position. So uh, especially with this new format, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. Jeff, if we could get Jeff a uh, microphone. That's jeffgluck.com. Yeah. Congrats, my hey. friend. <laughs> You, you said it for me, Lenny, so I don't have to. Um, is that what it is, jeffcluck.com? For now, yes. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Do you have, like, merchandise for sale and everything? <laughs> no, that's a good idea. I need to. <laughs> I mean, that's how everybody, I make bubblewallace.com. I'm sure it's ryanblaney.com. Merchandise, calendar, quotes, <laughs> tweets. You got to set it up, man. All right. I I'll, know some people. I'll look at your model. Okay. Mine's okay. <laughs> um. You know, I wanted to follow up on the sponsorship thing because, you know, we had heard for a while that um, in the offseason, like, oh, maybe, you know, it doesn't have anything. Now it looks like you have something to at least start out. Yeah. What's the offseason been like? Have you been sweating it? No offense to you personally. We're <laughs> on. I am sweating pretty badly right now. Um, but, you know, are, and how long do you think you have to go at the start of the season? Like, are, are you set beyond Daytona? What's, what's it look like? Yeah, we have uh, – we got the first uh, – the first six races right now with a 99% chance that we have more after that. Um, the biggest thing is we just, uh, we, we haven't had the best year those last two years. So um, we just need better results to, to bring a more positive outlook. And I believe that the changes that we have made, yet alone the new format coming up for the whole sport of NASCAR will, will definitely help that out. So I couldn't be more excited about this season. Yeah, it's not set in stone that it's a full season. But that doesn't change my outlook or my attitude or anything. I still got the same old guy that walks around trying to put a smile on everybody's faces and can go out there and deliver out on the racetrack. So um, we'll go to Daytona, um, give it our best effort. You know, had a really good showing last year on speedway races. Didn't have the best of luck, but uh, it's still fun to be able to go out there and race side by side with your competitors and, and just give it your all and, um, and just go on to Atlanta, do some work there. But Phoenix really shown – uh, that fall race, man, we were one of the fastest cars. I think that that race is probably the highlight one that I want to take back and do over again. Um, but, you know, no no different mindset. Off season hasn't been any different of this one. I've been making a couple more phone calls to see what we can do to be on the forefront of this, in which we are on the forefront of it. We're really close to finishing the deal. Um, got a great team at, at Roush Fenway. Got a great team behind me to, uh, to, to get that process done. But same old guy. Kelly. Have you gotten your um, new team to call you Bubba yet? Who am I talking to? Where are we at? Kelly Morrison, oh, that's car preview sorry. press guy. Uh, have they started calling me Bubba yet? They call me a lot worse, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do. Chris? Catchvince.com, got it. Thanks, bud. How are you? I'm good. I liked your tweet, you know, the snowstorm night, you know. When that was the, pretty good, huh? Yeah, it was that Epic or what? I, I mean, it, that was like the most retweets I've ever gotten. Um, but it said it was supposed to start snowing at like 7. That picture was taken like at 9. So it was like, where's the snow at? And then all of a sudden, it was like it was like a rain dance, but more of like a ski dance, and the snow fell. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty good. Um, Lidos, is that how you pronounce it? Yep, Lidos. Yeah, so they've stepped up their commitment for 2017, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Is there opportunity, if you run good, to start the year that they could increase their, their sponsorship, as we've seen happen in the Roush Fenway camp? Before? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how it's going to work. So we just got to show out um, this first six races, uh, show all of our cards, show what, what we have done in the off season coming into this preseason right now. Um, a lot of changes have been made, a lot of personnel changes, a lot of key people have been moved around. Um, still have Seth, my crew chief, behind me. We've uh, reformatted our team a little bit, and I think we have a great team going into this season. So like I said earlier, couldn't be more excited about the opportunity we have. Um, talking to the serious guys earlier, uh, who doesn't like a little challenge in front of them to go out and secure the rest of the season for them? So I'm all about it. Give me the good challenge. Jessica, then Don. Go ahead. 
go Clemson. She's a huge uh, Roll Tide fan, so that was a pretty good college game. Well, it could have been better. The outcome could have yeah. been a little better. Yeah. Um, Jessica Ruff at NASCAR.com. Um, last year you talked a lot about, um, you know, you guys had some struggles in daytime races. Mm -hmm. You seem to find your groove a little more at night. Um, what specifically have you guys done this off season, and do you think any of these personnel changes will help in that area? I've tried to call Wayne and Mike and O'Donnell about putting every race at night. Uh, we'll see. I don't know if it's a mindset thing that I psych myself out during the day, but just for some reason, some races will run good during the day. Uh, and I was like, man, did I run like that in the trucks? And I was like, did I ever win during the day? And Martinsville was two day races. So we won during there. So it's like, man, I don't, I don't know. But, um, I think you know with the changes that we've made, it'll be interesting to see. You know, we weren't we weren't the best car at night either. It's not like it was a total night and day difference, but um, we just needed a better overall package. And I think we've worked on that a lot this season, this off season, to uh, to put us close to the right spot where we need to be. Don there, and hope to get to Jacob. Bubba, Don Gamble, wrapping on racing. Even when times are tough, it looks like you handle it quite well. And I'd like some of your thoughts on your musical efforts with yeah. you and Ryan Blaney. Yeah. It's, uh, music definitely helps the tough situations. Um, when they're the tough situations, like the hard ones that you're trying to find a pick me up, I go to the heaviest music choice that I can. It's, it's like reverse psychology. It's those good breakdowns that you look for. Um, but then when Ryan comes in the scene, that's when the, when the times are good and, and we want to make ourselves look like fools. Just so we have a little bit of fallback room, that's when we start making these crazy videos. When you talked about your marketing efforts, will you and Ryan be cutting a record? Ooh, we got a lot of work for that. Um, he's got to figure out his vocal strengths and I got to get better at drumming, so we'll see. It's a long shot. Back of the room. Henry Hutton, Independent Tribune. Um, I know you've been, you know, like you said, traveling around a lot, and things might be kind of stressful with the sponsorship. But uh, you know, you went to Northwest Cabarrus and mm -hmm. are from this area. Is it nice to come back for a few days and kind of be near your hometown and where you grew up and things like that? Yeah, you know, I I love where I live. You know, I moved. I bought a house. Pulled a big boy move last year, or 2015. Bought a house, um, and just love where I, I live. Currently looking at getting another house. Um, not to, I'm gonna sell my house now. I'm not, I'm not like Denny Hamlin's status right now. Um, <laughs> trying, to, trying to be conservative and smart with my money. Um, but I love coming home, you know, even after a tough race weekend, coming back home to my roots, really. Um, and, and I'm two minutes from, from Northwest. My mom lives a mile away from the school. And just my dad's business is right down the street, right next to Stuart Haas. So um, every, every, you know, location I know, every landmark I know, I've, I know like the back of my hand. Now my girlfriend who has been here for, she's, she moved here when she was 14, she's 23 now, so what, nine years. She doesn't even know how to get from, to the house from work and she's been doing it for a year now, so it's a little bit different for her, but we enjoy it. Should be about the last question, Jacob. Jacob C.M. with Performance Motorsports Network. Bubba, right off the top when they were talking sponsorship, you referenced the whole, you know, pick me up, make everybody else happy attitude. That's just you, and I think we've all seen that. But amid all the uncertainty, I mean, where did, where did that start, and how on earth do you keep it going when, you know, there, there is the turmoil and the uncertainty this year? <sighs> Who likes a down, what is it, Debbie Downer person? And I could be up here like this the whole time waiting to get out of here, but that's boring. You know, I want to make you guys laugh and, and see the smiles on faces, get those chuckles, whether they're laughing at me or with me. I don't care you're laughing, so job well done by me. Um, see, there was a couple there. I just heard those. So, um, but it's just, it's just having fun, you know. It's, it's all about having fun no matter what you do. Um, I enjoy coming up here and talking to you guys. Um, no, I did not get paid to say that. I wish I did. Um, but... Uh, but just, just enjoy, just love talking to everybody, giving everybody something to talk about, laugh about. Um, and it really goes back to my parents. You know, my mom was always said, you know, no matter what, give the media uh, everything positive to talk about. Don't give them anything negative. They're going to they're gonna take it and run with it. Not that she's bashing on you guys. It's just the truth. Well, always great to hear from you. Daryl Bubba Wallace and uh, his teammate, Ryan Reed, walking Woo! it. 
How <laughs> Roush Fenway driver Ryan Reed. Uh, first question for Ryan. Looks like in the back. And we will start there. Way back there. Kelly Morrison from NASCAR. They're getting to you. <laughs> uh, being a diabetes advocate and overcoming many challenges just to race, how important is it uh, for you to share your story and to uh, inspire others to uh, strive to succeed? Uh, well, I think it would be, obviously, I have just, as someone living with diabetes, uh, I understand how tough it is and, and all the challenges that come with it. And so looking at um, where I'm at with racing and having uh, a platform to spread awareness and um, definitely want to take full advantage of that. But really, I wouldn't be able to do that uh, if I didn't have the partners with Lily Diabetes and Roush Fenway um, to do so, you know. And so they're everyone on board is extremely passionate about doing so. And so even though it's extremely important to me and obviously something I'm very passionate about, um, I have great partners that allow me to do that. And, um, you know, it's uh, aligned perfectly. And uh, when I get to go out there and talk about uh, my partnership with Lily Diabetes, it's, it's so easy because it's such a big part of my life. Jacob. Jacob Seelma, Performance Motorsports Network. Number one, I'm sorry you had to follow Bubba. I just don't know how anybody does that nowadays. Yeah, no, that's not that's not an easy no. tour. No. Now, more importantly, two years coming up on the win that you had at Daytona. I, I know, obviously, that's going to be prickling in the back of your mind. But more importantly, just to go into this season and build on what you had last year. I mean, it felt like you guys finally found some consistency the second half of the year. How important is it to keep that going through the first part of this year, knowing this new format and kind of you know, the rewards for consistency this go round? Uh, well, as far as Daytona goes, I think anyone who's had success there knows that that doesn't mean you're going to have success again. Um, you know, it's it's such a tough, it seems like we're, you know, every time I've been there, we've had fast race cars and we've found our way to the front at some point, but that's not a, that does not mean, that doesn't guarantee you anything. So uh, I just go into that race every year with an open mind and do what I can and try and be smart and keep myself out of trouble. Just don't make mistakes. And from there at the end, we'll, we'll make, we'll hopefully have a shot at it. Um, but, you know, you, you talked about the last half of last year where we seemed to find some consistency and, and, and seemed to have more speed week in and week out. Uh, and, and certainly the finishes were a lot better. Um, I started last year with a new crew chief, Phil Gould, and, man, he, uh, he taught me so much throughout the year, um, not just about um, driving the race car, but how to, how to have the right mentality and, and not give up. Um, there's a lot of weekends where we ended up with good finishes, where we unloaded and we were terrible. And, um, you know, he's really the one who taught me how to battle throughout a weekend and get better. Uh, the first half of the year, I did feel like we had a lot of bad luck. Um, there, it was e easy to make a lot of excuses and point to errors here and there. But um, the point is we got our got it together. We eliminated the mistakes. We, we figured it out. And uh, by the playoffs, we, we were in pretty good shape and uh, made a solid run at it. And, you know, looking back at it, if we would have done one or two things different, um, we were we could have been easily in that final four. So uh, that's our goal is to go into the playoffs this year and uh, just like we did last year, make a run at it and find ourselves in Homestead and race for a championship. So if we uh, build faster race cars and I do my job and uh, everyone checks the boxes every weekend, then uh, there's no reason why we can't be, um, you know, standing in victory lane at Homestead. Kelly. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Ryan, Lily Diabetes has been very tuned into the sport through sponsorship of you or, or Xfinity races. Have they had any influence or input in how they would like to see you develop through the series or, or when you go to Cup? Or have they has there been no discussions of, of how they want you, I guess, to progress? Yeah, there's been discussions. I discuss it all the time. Uh, you know, I, I definitely want to go cup racing, and um, I didn't get into the sport. Uh, I got into the sport because I wanted to be a cup driver, uh, just like I think most most people who have. Uh, with that being said, I'm extremely blessed and fortunate to be in the Xfinity Series, to be able to drive race cars full time is unbelievable at any level. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you saw, you know, obviously uh, with Roush and Lily, uh, I was able to run my first cup race last year at Talladega, which was unbelievable for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, after being diagnosed with, with diabetes, I never thought I'd even race again, let alone race at um, the highest level in, in motorsports. So um, to see that commitment from Lily and, and Roush uh, is awesome. And uh, hopefully we can build on that, you know, and figure out a way to, to go cup racing. Wolfgang. Um, 
Wolfgang Monzer from Germany, Rheinsport Price Agency. <clears throat> Obviously, Xfinity and Spring Cup cars or Monster Energy Cup cars are totally different machinery. Nevertheless, in case you will have a problem or Bubba have a problem, is there something you can take over from the Spring Cup sign and can take it to your advantage in Xfinity? Or you must work out totally set up or whatever is, is necessary to make the car quick? Uh, I mean, there is, um, uh, I think, a, a lot of differences. And, and after, after driving one, um, I realized how vastly different they are in, in, in a lot of facets, um, you know, and also to the competition level. Uh, you know, it was a great learning experience. But with that being said, uh, I think, you know, the engineers and, and the people a lot smarter than me can go in and look at it and find the similarities and, and look at notes and look at, you know, what we do on Saturday to help Sunday or vice versa. Um, but, you know, it's – and I think with the way the rules are headed, they're getting closer together. So um, I definitely think there's a lot to learn from each other, and I think that we can um, – you know, the, the Cup guys can benefit us and, and vice versa. And um, I think that at Roush Fenway, we're, we are definitely one team, one dream right now. You know, we're trying to figure out how to get Roush Fenway back on top, and we have all the confidence in the world that we're going to do so. Chris. Chris on catchfence.com. Hi, Ryan. Um, Roush Fenway Racing, as you described, is going through a lot of changes, but is there a lot of changes going through with your team for this season? And if there are, can you talk about them? Honestly, no, not really. Um, you know, we talked, I talked earlier about the end of the year and the success we were having, and I fought really, really hard uh, to keep a lot of my guys together. Um, there are small changes here and there, but the core group of guys is the same. I'm going to have Phil on top of the box and the same engineer that I had last year. And, um, you know, I think. Um, I, those guys are the guys for me, you know, and I got their back and they have my back and, um, you know, really excited about keeping us together because I think that uh, we can have a lot of success together. And so um, a lot of changes at Roush Fenway, a lot of changes across the board in racing, um, you know, whether we're talking about rules package or format changes. And uh, but especially with all those changes going on, it's nice to have some consistency with the guys who go to the racetrack with me. Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. In your association with Lily's Diabetes, do they, how much do they use you to reach out to people who struggle with diabetes? And, and is there one special that you've met that just really, you know, affected you? Uh, I mean, there's been, um, we, we do a lot, you know. I mean, uh, we go to the racetrack and if, um, you know, there's someone who reaches out or if we hear about someone's story who, uh, whether it's a kid or an adult living with diabetes, then whether they're whether they're struggling with it or not struggling with it, you know, there there can be um, you know just a, a lot of great things that happen from just getting together. And I think uh, anyone who lives with diabetes knows what it what it means when you meet someone else with diabetes. You automatically just have this connection because you understand the adversity and the challenges you go through and the just the daily struggles. Um, but I mean, I've heard so many different stories and. Um, you know, I've met a lot of people and a lot of families that I still talk to today and have great relationships just because of what we have in common. Um, but, you know, I think when I hear stories, I, when I was diagnosed, like I said earlier, I, I was told I'd never race again. So when I hear someone um, tell their story and their dreams have been affected by it in a negative way, those are the stories that I really connect with. Um, and so a kid uh, last two years ago uh, told me that he got kicked off the basketball team after he was diagnosed. And um, it was just devastating to me. Uh, he was in his um, early teens, I think 12 or 13, and um, such a pivotal time in life as it is. And so, um, you know, that story stuck with me. And obviously, I offered any help I could and, you know, said anything I can do for you, man, just let me know. Um, but I think that when you hear stories like that, it kind of puts in perspective how, how tough this disease can be and what it can, what it can do to your life. Last question, Lewis. Hi there, Lewis Frank of Reuters. If I calculate it right, you're 23. You have friends outside, outside of racing who may be not interested in racing and probably would be better off asking somebody 16 or 17, but how do we get, how do we get uh, kids' eyes off of screens and onto watching racing? Uh, well, I mean, hopefully they are. If they are on a screen, hopefully they are watching racing. But uh, I think that's not. A, I think I get paid a lot of money if I knew the answer to that, right? Um, but you know, I, I think that what we're doing, um, looking at these format changes, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. Um, and you know, I didn't just. I I tweeted, you know, my my feelings on it that I supported it, and that wasn't just to make NASCAR happy. Uh, that was how I truly feel. Uh, and I think we're going in the right direction. I think Monster coming on board is going to bring a lot of fresh ideas. And I, I think that in itself, when you when you have a brand like Monster come on, you're automatically going to get 
the eyes of um, a lot of kids like my age, you know. I mean, I know that, you know, me and my friends, whether they're into racing or not into racing, um, a brand like Monster is someone that we associate with ourselves. You know, we think of that brand as they do things that we are in, we're interested in. You know, they, they whether they're the sponsor at Supercross or whatever, and that's what we want to watch. Is, and so I think Monster just bringing its brand and being a part of NASCAR is going to create a lot of awareness for NASCAR with, with my generation, with people my age. And so... Um, you know, the format changes should bring more excitement. If we have good racing, then, then we'll bring the attention. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for thank your you comments. Guys. Ryan Reed, and at this point, we will pause for just about a half.